catch himself, using his jab, eats a right hand, and then the right hand, and he goes down. Oh my goodness! A dream is made real! <laughs> That's the real reason. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Radio face. It wasn't our choice. Radio voices. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 people back again. Uh, just looking at the watch. A few minutes uh, overdue, but as I said, uh, summer's uh, simmering down a bit in the boxing world. Fortunate to be joined by an important uh, array of uh, fighters, uh, up-and-coming fighters. A recurring theme the last few weeks, uh, Dillian White's uh, you know, stable uh, camp, his uh, entourage got another similar sort of reciprocal here with uh, the streetwise management fighters um, present and looking to be the future of the sport uh guys want to introduce yourselves with my uh co-host uh raf as always uh give a few words to to start off yeah looking forward to tonight's show uh got some up and coming fighters from streetwise management uh we previously had uh mickey amu down who, st who spearheads the whole thing so good to shed light on uh, the young guns in the camp uh, how's everything been with yourself you're not too bad my friend you're not too bad yourself yeah all good man all good good to be back uh guys Get straight into it. Uh, do you want to, from I suppose left to right, we'll start with uh, Mickey yeah, Jr. Yeah, Mickey Amu Jr. Yeah, I'm, I'm coaching these boys here. We got with us them uh, three professional fighters. Um, working with them for a couple of years now. Ram is the first Ryan come along shortly after, and Jordan the most recent. Uh, and we'll all be out in September 7th. So short, short time coming. Brilliant. Goodwin show. Uh, I think headlined by Zewadi Camacho and Dion Juma. Juma. That's the one. A massive card for all of you guys, I suppose, to kind of share that uh, that feel being together, obviously, day in, day out. How does it kind of feel preparations for that? Uh... Yeah, for me, um, obviously, the fight the, is to, the fight is always, I've got one job, and that's to get these boys in the best shape they can. So obviously, the feel being as, a big, as big as it is and an exciting build adds to motivation, but it doesn't actually change my job. I'm sure it gives these boys an extra incentive, but my job is obviously looking at the um, opponents with what lined up and then studying the best way to get my boys in the best shape they can to go out and do the business. Yeah, how do you, I suppose, um, looking at kind of the, the tactical element, being fighters at a relatively... Introduction, you've got to get... Introduce everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Jordan Dujon. Um, just recently turned over, um, fought in July. Uh, one and zero now as a professional. Um, on the same card as Ramez, who's fighting for Southern Area. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, my name is Ryan Walker. I've had ten fights as a pro now. One and lost one. Um, fought for the English title not long ago, which I fell short. So I've had the comeback fight since, and I've got this next one coming up and hopefully move back onto another title. Hello, um, I'm Ramez Mahmood. I'm boxing on the same show as well. I'm 9-0, I'm beating right now. Boxing for the Southern area, and I'm going to steal the show on the night. Brilliant, good to see. It's short and sweet. <laughs> the way to go. Obviously, got uh, Michael in the background looking on. Um, guys, I mean, just kind of starting off with, where did this uh, boxing journey for you start off? Uh, introduced like to the gym, between yourselves, kind of how did the collaboration uh, come about? The collaboration with with yourselves to how you got introduced to, to boxing um with boxing i actually started with watching amir khan in the olympics that's where i started taking interest in it so um went down to my local gym gate or abc and it all started from there i had my whole amateur career there um when i was about 21 yeah about 21 years old when i started working as a math teacher i went down to the pro sw gym spoke to mickey senior about my aspirations to turn pro yeah and credit to him I was just a math teacher that walked in. He gave me so much, so much time. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of sparring down there. My first bar down gym was with Michael Junior, who's he's now my coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, tried to take his head off. <laughs> he tried to knock me out. <laughs> he didn't want to see me again. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Since then, um, just been up the spiral from there, really. Yeah. And uh, Raph, obviously, you've built a report with uh, with these guys, uh, sort of getting a more of an in depth analysis of their progression. Uh, yeah. Give me your kind of your views on what you see. Yeah, guys. it's um, it's also on the broader scope of things. I've been speaking to Mickey most recently about Anthony Joshua and yeah. uh, developments in Dubai, and I know, sorry, in Saudi Arabia, and I know that uh, he's not short of opinions in that regard. So <laughs> the floor is yours. No, nah, not yet. Not yet. We carry on with the, um, <laughs> yeah. the build Not yet. But yeah, like you said, going back to um the journey of how we've come together and how we are. It's like, there's many factors coming into it, but 
Overall, I like, me personally, I like to see it as God's plan. It's God's will, you know. There's so many factors we can look at, but this we're all here. We all got here for our own reason, our own purposes, and we're all on a pathway. And it's it's it's, it's nice that all of our journeys have, have come together, and they're, we're helping each other along the way. So, yeah, it's been a good journey. But I like to think this is only the start, and this is going to go on to obviously bigger and better things. Yeah, and each as it kind of comes to give your kind of perspective. Do you see that versatility in the gym? That from different backgrounds, how you guys can bring each other on. The, the confidence that is instilled within this yeah stable. 100 and i think that's a credit to boxing in itself because obviously the sport the sport is one of the hardest sports in the world and once you re, once you are in that gym you're back, where you've come from all your issues everything outside of the gym goes out the window you know you walk into that gym and it's like you've got a different respect for each other and us for here if it weren't for boxing we we might not even talk to each other we might if we see each other it might be a high and bite and that's it yeah. but now we're at a stage where we're spending two three hours a day five days a week together and when we're not together we're on the whatsapp conversations instagram <laughs> conversations yeah. slagging each other off <laughs> <laughs> building a uh, building a rapport like you said and just it's, 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 it's more of a family vibe than a business vibe yeah. so i think that yeah. helps the situation as well yeah so the usual kind of banter is it one of these kind of um how i say dynamics where you know you guys are you're, you're prepping meals together or is it kind of you have your own personal aspirations but then again when you see someone fight say for a mess is fighting uh like two weeks later you're fighting three weeks later is it all that kind of you intertwine that that confidence to give each other as best uh, preparation as possible you know what we do a lot in the gym we compete with each other like always trying to get the best i mean you've got rams he's always competitive he's always trying to do the most and lucky enough we're fighting on the same day so we're all going at the same pace is that the first time that's happened? Uh, the first... Nah, the last show was on the same, I think it was on the same show as well. The first yeah, yeah. show we've had all, all three, of you guys. Yeah. And it was, it was meant to be on the last one, which was June 29th. Was it? 29th. Yeah. The last one, Ramos was meant to be on, but yeah. obviously we got the good news that he's got the Southern Area title. Of course. So he got pushed back to now September the 7th, but we managed to get these two, plus another fighter, Biggie, that we're working with. He'd be on the bill as well. So yeah. And a few sparring partners we've been working with. So that in itself as well builds a vibe because the guys we're sparring with, we're also good pals with. And yeah. to know that they're all out on the same day helps you um, build up and peak together at the same time. So yeah. that's been exciting. Is this Southern Area title shot, do you think, the benchmark for you guys to kind of elevate and push that that name, that image, through to the, the, bigger, the bigger markets? Yeah, 100%. I mean, the Southern Area is the first title you can really win as a boxer. And I've always said it's not going to be the end. It's going to be sort of the start of my career. Um, I don't want to look too far ahead right now to be honest. I want to focus on the fight fully, but I do believe that a victory here and the title around my waist are going to push on to bigger and better things in sport. Put it this way: I told Ramis, if you don't win that Southern Area title, don't come back to the gym. Wow! Cutting strings. So there's no pressure then. <laughs> no pressure now. No, no, that's no. like you said. That's obviously the benchmark. We want to achieve titles, and this is the start. This is the the first level from where we're at. So yeah, definitely something to aim for. But like you said, there's a benchmark that once one gets there, they all follow, and we all kick on together. Yeah. So how's yeah. it going to work on the night? Obviously, Goodwin hosting the event. Uh, you guys, I presume, will be spaced out as best as possible to so that you can watch each other's fights. Because yeah. I'm sure you want to see. You <laughs> know the strap coming back to the uh the gym um yeah like how kind of excited you guys are you for the uh the event i'm super excited obviously um i've not been with these guys for that long but just through my journey just seeing what they put in in training so then on the night i mean this is a stepping stone for Ramez. so what can i say i mean it'd just be amazing to see him win it yeah because obviously i see all the hard work that goes behind the curtain there's not many people fortunate enough to see that so yeah and I do well, like you said, it's spaced out well so we can all watch each other. But you know, I mean, this is the, this is the business. We, we're the fight, well, they're the fighters, I'm the trainer. But the business is the business, so the promoter's going to do what, what works for him. If it works out for us, it works out. But if it doesn't, I'm sure they, they know they're there with each other in spirit. You know, they all know they got each other's backs, even if yeah. they can't be there watching. They've trained, I think, the three months leading up to it is just as important as hearing them cheer them on in the on the night, you know, yeah. And in the case of yourself, Ramez, that's quite an interesting gimmick. It's the first that I've heard personally in that teacher by day, boxer by night. How is it intertwining that for yourself? Do you find that easy? Is it manageable? It is manageable, yeah. I mean, it's, it makes life a lot harder, but you don't get anything without it being a bit challenging. So yeah. my days, I sort of wake up at 5 a.m., don't get back home till about 9 in the evening. Yeah. Um, but again, it's got to be done. It just shows how much I want it, really. And are the school quite receptive to that, as in the kids in your class, or do you kind of detach the two from one another? 
I try not to bring it into work, but yeah. you know when you stick your name in on Google and people start finding out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the kids ain't yeah. acting up in school. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, 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 can't, you can't avoid it. Yeah. yeah. So I get my homework on time. <laughs> now I said, and and I was gonna say, uh, Jordan. So how long have you been working with the team? Um, so I've been with the team since um, it's about December now. December. About December. I would say full time. Um, it was full time about July. July. Yeah, no, just before July. It's yeah, about, so it's about me. About, about me. July. Yeah. We we got introduced in December, but he came. He went back to the amateurs yeah. and done the. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. So um, I started basically. Um, I've never really been a boxing fan, but off the back of AJ winning the um, his first world title against um, Charles Martin, um, that made me think. Oh, you know what? I could actually do boxing. Um, walked into West Ham boys um, straight away, um, just got thrown into sparring and then into fights, basically. So through the two and a half years that I've been boxing, um, I've had 20 fights, lost three as an amateur. Um, I've just recently entered the elite ABAs, um, got to the semis. Um, I thought I won, um, but... That happens in the amateurs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, corruption is a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is? I'm not going to put it down to um, corruption because the guy I fought, um, we've had, we fought twice. Uh, first time I won, second time he won. He's a good boxer. I think you probably interviewed him in actually. <laughs> with, with all the belts. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Andre, 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 yeah. Sounds good. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll, we'll fight on the pro ranks on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, 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 the amateurs, the amateurs, and the pros is a completely different ball game. Yeah. Um, I just think for where I've come in that short amount of space of time, um, as a pro, I just think I'm gonna do extremely well. Um, even the short space of time I've been with Michael, my style's completely changed as a boxer. Um, so it'd be interesting to see a year that another year down the line when I've had maybe 10 fights, 10 and 0. Um, it'd be interesting to see what style I've developed from there. I mean, Ramez, you've come on obviously a long way since uh, I suppose turning over to the pros, of course, yeah, getting, balancing that day job with the I suppose the the heart, the hard and grit with the uh, the boxing world you guys in terms of your embryonic stages i mean how are you coping with the 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 transition from amateur to pro and do you feel like your style is more fitted to to that model i feel like i'm more suited to the pros because i like to sit down in my shots a bit more and i like to take my time and be more tricky with stuff so amateurs for me you have to be more faster on your feet and it's more speed mm. and so, yourself um uh, with myself to be honest with you um my style ranges. I, I think I'm a bit of everything. So to me, it's not been that big of a change at the minute. Um, yeah, the inner pros is a bit more sit down um, on your shots. But whereas I'm only doing four rounders, it's I've not really had a chance to um, develop that full pro style, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interested to see when I have my uh, six rounders and then pushing on to eight tens, then then I'll get to see the difference. But as of right now, four and oh, uh, sorry, four rounds to me, there's no difference to the amateurs really. Yeah. And Michael, you're obviously technicality with the, the tutelage you're giving these guys early on and also Ramez, your experience. How do you think that moulds together to to produce these guys and take them to that that next level uh, day in, day out? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a process. And obviously you have to take bits from the they, they was using in the amateurs and obviously see what they, their strengths was and see how you can, like you said, enhance it and then um, check, take, turn it over into a professional style. Like Jordan said, the pro game, 12, three minute rounds is a lot longer. You know, all the pros, they settle down, they plant, they plant their feet, they ride shots, they sit, uh, sit on their shots and they've got longer to set up the big shot. So you might, in some cases, you see fights where, um, um, say for instance, Amir Khan, Sal Alvarez. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alvarez, uh, Canelo and uh, Khan. Khan was peppering him, pinging his head off for four or five rounds. But yeah. Alvarez yeah. didn't have a care in the world because he knew, listen, don't worry, because once I land my shot, you can have all these rounds. I want to take my time. But once I yeah. do get my shots off, and as you see, I only took the one shot over and right, and it was the match. Do so. you think that patience element kind of plays a part with the the, the that mould into the pros? Because yeah. you're not yeah. used to that kind of... that under the lights, yeah. the sweat, the, yeah, the temperature, the rising level. 100% patience It is a big thing because you've got a long time. And the, once you get to a certain level, it's like every fighter can take a big punch. Every fighter can give a big punch. Every fighter has got fast. Every fighter, they've got, you've all got your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. 
So it's not like amateurs where you've got three rounds to get out of there and get on top of them and win it. You might find out that it'll be the later rounds that you'll come on top. So you don't want to get out and rush. You've got to take your time, see what your guy's got. You've got the rounds to figure him out. So there is a lot of work that goes into that transition from the amateurs, from my point of view, from training him. Because Julian especially, he's a sort of boxer. He's very fast. He's very in and out. He's very explosive. And that's always going to work. You don't want to take that away. Yeah. But you want to find the right balance of when to use it, when to uh, hold back and save your energy and then go through the gears as well. So it's an for me, it's enjoyable because it's, it's, it's nice to see the progress of a fighter. Yeah. And as far as sandpapering out those instincts that you'll have before going to the pro ranks, how easy has that been with Jordan specifically? Um, um, with Jordan, yeah, I say, it's, 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 again, it's always a process. Again, we've, we've not even seen... We've not even nowhere near where we want to get yet. We've had one fight, we've had one training camp. So we're still at a stage where the, the his pro debut was perfect for me because it was get in there, don't take risks. So yeah. that you can show composure. Because naturally, everyone on their pro debut wants to get out of there and they go swinging. Blast them out, get that, <laughs> that yeah, Cheryl yeah, yeah, knockout. Yeah, yeah. They've, sold, they've sold tickets. It's the first time they got their chest out. You know what I mean? The best <laughs> <they've sold. laughs> they want to get out of there and put the Tyson Fury-esque yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's done a lot of weight sessions just so he looks. He's <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah, so um, Ruiz is the, is the role model, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's my role model right now. Every session you want to do bench press, every single session. But yeah, no, again, so um, we're not where he wants to be, but obviously as time goes on, we'll see as he progresses and how easily he's made the progression. Obviously, Ramiz and Ryan are at eight and nine each, so um, they're already at a stage where they've, they've got their style now. It's yeah. just about tweaking it on the opponent when we get the fights that we get. Jordan still in that transition. So. And uh, Ramez, back to you, obviously, uh, part-time teacher. What's the formula going to be on the night? A bit cliche uh, yeah, to yeah, say, yeah. but <laughs> no, no, <laughs> to win, the formula to win that Southern Area title, how are you going to, I suppose, have you had a chance to look at your opponents? And... Um, I had a look, I don't want to say too much just to people listening. Buy a ticket, <laughs> yeah. buy a ticket and have a look. We, we, we ain't saying a word. We ain't saying a word. Listen, this is a 50-50 fight. This is a massive fight for us, the whole team, for Ramez, obviously the most important for Ramez. But this is a massive fight. And it, this is a lot, like we said earlier, for the team, because he's setting the benchmark. If he gets that title, then the fight, other fighters know they got to they be next up. Yeah. You know, so um, we put a lot into this. It's been a long, a good training camp, because again, yeah. he was meant to box in June, he didn't. So he's had an extended training camp for this. So we think everything's going to be right on the night. And um, fingers crossed, obviously, it's 50 50 fight, anything can happen. But I'm, I'm confident as long as Ramos gets in there and does what we know we can do, yeah, it's going to be an exciting fight. Like you said, he's there to steal the show, he ain't there just for the win. So, yeah. and assuming he does get the job, yeah. sorry, sorry, assuming you do get the job done, where do you go from there? Again, I don't want to sort of overlook the fight, but as I said this is the start of bigger and better things. And yeah, Super Bantamweight division and the Featherweight division are, I think, are quite wide open at the minute, to be honest. Yeah. And they're looking for someone to sort of come through. You got the sort of British and Commonwealth champions who are starting to push on now, leaving them titles open. So again, don't want to look too far ahead. But after this yeah. fight, then that's what I'm looking towards. Yeah. Yeah. That British, and, uh, I suppose, sorry to interrupt. That uh, British scene's kind of been a bit muddled up recently. Featherweights, you also got Ryan uh, Walsh, the champion. Isaac Lowe is mandatory, I think. Yeah, well, then... Ryan Walsh has signed up for that MTK tournament. The golden contract. Right? At, Ryan Walsh. Yeah. That's, I'm not sure what happens to his British title. Yeah. Um, Commonwealth champion Lee Wood's gone in that as well. So again, don't know what happens to his title. Um, down at Super Banner Week, Lucian Reed's boxing Brad Foster for the British and Commonwealth. So, let's use that. He was, ne was never officially out, but just couldn't get the fights. But he's, he's got a British title fight now. So, so you don't know what's happened with the titles at Featherweight, yeah. and you got boys who are sort of, and, and the records aren't too far from man either. I mean, Lucian Reed had about eight or nine, Brad Foster had about 11 or 12. So, yeah. See Ramiz, so, Ramiz is studied everybody. Yeah. He knows everyone. Yeah, you have to. I, I get you have to. all the time. You have to. I've seen to. this guy. I've seen that guy. He's English titles, Commonwealth, British titles. But that's British encouraging British for you, isn't it? Because you know he's doing, he's he's doing, doing, he's doing, doing, he's doing his homework. Yeah, he's yeah. got his eyes on him. And obviously, we've got to be ready for all of that. Like you said, yeah. right now, the focus is southern area. But once we get that, which we're confident we will, then we've got to kick on and we've got to have all everyone else. Any Anybody that's holding yeah. something we want is in sight. And once you've, assuming you do get the job done, which we believe you will, would you look to push that USP of being the math magician as far as your marketability goes? Would you want to push that as your USP in the market? Because that's something that's very um, detachable from a mainstream boxer. It's a really unique gimmick. Yeah, pr probably. Just just because, um, as you said, it's very unique. I don't think anyone else in the country can actually use that nickname except for me yeah. because <laughs> it matches perfectly. And yeah. every show I go to, 
I get people coming up to me asking where does the nickname come from and it gets people sort of talking yeah so that's that's where i've gone with it with that of it's original as well isn't it because you're not really kind of adopting the, the typical names as like you know your matrix or your, yeah. your heavy hitter yeah, or mesmer yeah. mood like you know you're it's, it's original it's something that comes from your it's quirky kind of heart quirky. yeah and it will sell yeah definitely brian obviously a bit about you tell us a bit your story team <coughs> you see that on the yeah. cat what's that about just break uh, it down for us how you got into the game of boxing i got into boxing when i was young well not i started a bit i started when i was 18 my first amateur fight so i started kind of lit um, I had about 25 amateur fights. I weren't the best, so one half, lost half. But since I've stopped amateurs, I've just come on a lot. I've just learned on the job. And working with Michael, he's helped me a lot as well. So Is that the best way to learn, you reckon? Being thrown straight into the deep end, and that's how you learn? Yeah, I did, because I was never a boxer. I didn't. Yeah. yeah, I started late, and I've picked up as I've gone along. Yeah, of course. When I first yeah, I started. Weight yeah. uh, my weight class is super bantamweight. So a good sparring so, in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice it's, it's, it's <laughs> gym wars. Gym wars. <laughs> like yeah. I said, Rams is always competitive. So me and him are always going out. Yeah. Is this the blueprint then? Obviously, Ramez coming through the southern area, probably kicking on them for like English Commonwealth. Are you looking to go the traditional route, you think? Uh, Ideally, yeah. But then you don't know what's going to happen. So you just got to see whatever opportunities come at. At that given time, yeah, you might go up so, to maybe the Saudi Arabia fights might uh, <laughs> out show, in, show me the money. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the card of uh, AJ Ruiz. Uh, obviously, that's something I want to kind of probably start off with. Uh, AJ Ruiz announcement the rematch, yeah, Saudi 100%. Arabia. Uh, that did come as a shock to many, some more than others, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's no other place to start uh, on our panel than with Mickey. So I know that you've got you're dying to let us know what you have to say. Um. Obviously, on the fight itself, I don't want to touch down on the Saudi Arabia situation because we, nothing, I'm, I'm still hearing stories about it's not even completely finalised and there's some things that's going on with Ruiz's side that they're not... Doing. So that's the business side of things. I don't want to touch down on that. The boxing side of things, for me, this is the most exciting and the most... This is the biggest fight, I could say, of, of my generation. I'm 28 years old now, so I've yeah. been our generation. We've grown with AJ for the last... Since 2012, so we've been like seven, eight years. We've, yeah. we've all grown up with him. We've watched him. He's been the top of the game from that stage. So for him to put it all on the line for, for, with an immediate rematch with Ruiz... It's, you got to take your hat off to him. You got to take your hat off to the team. It's a massive risk because if he loses that, he puts himself in. A, in a, he's between a rock and a hard place after that. Yeah. My personal opinion, I think, he, he, I think it's a mistake taking Ruiz straight back on. Do you think he's under duress to go there, or he's of his own accord said, "I want to go to Saudi"? Um, again, that's the business side. It's, it's a bit of a hard one because he's a fighter. Obviously, yeah. being to get to the level he has to, he has to genuinely, be, genuinely believe. He's the best fighter out there. He's the best heavyweight in the division. If you yeah. don't believe that, you won't even make it past British level. You know what I mean? You have to believe that yeah. you are number one. So maybe, yeah, it is on him. But I think the team would have also put pressure on because from uh, Matchroom's point of view, I believe them heavyweight titles, they hold a lot of weight in Matchroom boxing because yeah. obviously yeah. AJ was at the forefront of it. And on the back of AJ, a lot of fighters have come through. A lot of big shows have happened off of that. And and then now, it, um, with Matchroom signing up a lot of heavyweights, if Matchroom doesn't have any belts for them heavyweights to compete for, it's a bit of a... So you think it's like a domino effect? If AJ goes, then it's really hard to it's, then... It's going to be, yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, it puts everyone everyone on, on that side of uh, boxing, Matchroom boxing, it, it puts everyone in a bit of a... Uh, hard, well, it, it, it won't be as good as the situation it was when AJ had the belts. Yeah, and you touched on that. Um, if AJ doesn't believe that he's the guy in the division, then it's very far. It's very hard for him to get past that glass ceiling. Yeah. When you look at the other guys like Tyson Fury, Deontay, they've got that whole alpha male stance yeah. about them. Yeah, there's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. doubt in yeah. their mind. Yeah. With Joshua, there's the whole. He there was he was on record recently saying that. I'm not sure if I could pull it off, but I'm going to give it a go and yeah, things like that. Yeah. Along words to that effect, yeah, there's think, not that think, 100% conviction. I think, more, um, I think that's more personality than belief. I think as a fighter, I think he yeah. has been beliefs, but I think his personality, he's, he, he, he seems like he tries to come across more humble. He seems like he tries The media to, trained, yeah, yeah. Where Fury has spoken. Me, I love that. That's He's my favourite. He's wilder, <laughs> same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. He says, yeah, he's, he's not there to please no one. He'll say what everyone's to say, but he'll get in the ring and back it up. AJ, like you said, media trained, obviously, they've kept him a certain way to please everybody. Yeah. But now I'm hoping that loss allows us to see the real AJ, where he says, you know what, I don't care whether I'm pleasing you, yeah. I'm selling tickets, so you want to watch me fight, I'm not. 
the only thing I'm here for is them world title belts. I'm hoping that's the AJ Reese. Yeah. That's always been, I think, a theme where yeah. we look at the persona, we look at the billboard image of AJ. Do you feel that played detriment to his performance, the pressure, the occasion that he wasn't able to kind of come out of his, his shell and perform? Yeah, 100%. Me personally, because at the end of the fight, he looked like a relieved man. I've never seen nothing like Back it. On man. The ropes, yeah, casual. He, looked, he was smiling. He was taking pictures smiling, with yeah. uh, Andy Ruiz. And now, uh, take nothing away from AJ from that aspect because none of us have been in that situation. So no. we can't talk bad about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah I've never seen a world champion lose such a big fight, such uh, with all the belts on the line and for yeah. him to look like, well, you know what? It's done, it's done. It happens. We move on. He did look like a relieved man. So I can imagine it must have been hard being in a situation he was at the top yeah. of the game for that long. I think if you look at other previous world champions in the heavyweight division i think there's a lot of pressure because if you see the people who's getting compared to like mike tyson yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that oh on the record that was so important to him i think the fact that he lost it i think he thought all right there's no more pressure now it's just a case of push on do what i've been doing yeah um and i just think it was that oh i think that oh was the biggest thing that was yeah yeah I well, think going back to I was going to say so from your point of view, it's on the same subject. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, Joshua should take the rematch straight away, or do you think it would have been better for him to have gone out at one or two warm up fights and then faced Ruiz? I think he should go straight back in because he's already fine at that level. So he's, I think he's gone past. I mean, you don't need to take a step back and go for an easy fight. I think go straight back in. He might lose it. Yeah. It's a big risk. But I, let, me, let me say, Ryan, let me ask you because that's the first time we've never spoke about it. So I want to know your opinion. Do you think? That he has to train, change anything drastically, or do you think all he has to do is turn up and box to the best of his ability to get that win? To me, it just looked like it was a bad night in that last fight. Yeah. So. See, that's what I don't know. Say. Yeah. Like, my opinion that's is, the... I've seen in boxing where it's the fighters that make fighters look bad, and yeah. AJ being a champion with a champion's mentality, man, or realize that it, you just got dominated with certain certain little things that um, mm. Ruiz was doing mm. certain yeah adjustments adjustments yeah. he was making yeah. that I've never seen AJ have to make you've seen AJ go from boxing keeping it calm to you know what Ed Dan let's have it yeah. let's go to war and that's when he pulls it out of the bag but they, you don't really see much adjustment from him but Ruiz was there was things one thing I noticed from Ruiz that I thought is wicked and I think no one notices if you watch him he was stalking um AJ, but he wasn't just plodding forward. It wasn't just like a come forward fight. I walk in, I'm just walking you down. No, it's educated pressure. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I noticed, if you watch, he sits his weight onto his back leg just yeah. a little bit, about 60% more onto the back leg than the front leg, yeah. which obviously sets the power for the right hand. So he wanted AJ to go to Ruiz's right to set up that shot. And now, when he was going away from him, when he's going to Ruiz's left, all he'll do is little things, show out the left hand, yeah. fake a left hook, do yeah. little things to get him to go away he wants. Definitely. And the, watching AJ's fights and, and looking back at his previous fights, He's not been in a position where they've had that. He's been in a position where he can jab one, two. When he puts his head down and lands three shots, the other person thinks, whoa, and they're getting out of it. Yeah. When he's done that against Ruiz, Ruiz is Mexican. You see the Mexican heart. Oh, that woke him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot of invisibility there as well because we were, from my kind of perspective on the yeah. fight, I looked at it and I thought, Ruiz, is, he's in, like, when you pivot with your shots, he's not really showing a lot there. He's not exerting a lot of energy yeah. around the waist. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Although he's putting that weight onto his back leg. Yeah, yeah. Again, when he's twisting, but he's he not. he still managed to generate his body and catch shots. Joshua off guard. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the a left hook the he caught him with that wobbled him, that was a perfectly executed left hook. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see him doing it on the pad, you'll say that's a lovely shot. But to see a fighter do it under the pressure and under the barrage of an AJ combination, which we know AJ is is a killer as, as a finisher, mm -hmm. where AJ is one of the biggest a lot of fighters were going to a show. To, it, you would, yeah, yeah. they would have covered yeah. that, but he bent his legs, planted his feet, and whipped in that shot, and he carried on rolling and throwing. And the, it, AJ, he's gonna have problems because I personally think. Watching his training, he doesn't train enough fighting wise. Like he doesn't train to go towards. He trains. Yeah. If you watch his training, it's a lot of jab, one, two, bases, keep it long. Even his training was saying one, two, one, two. Anyone? I haven't really seen much of the pad work to be honest, but yeah. I could say that from a man from a management side, I wouldn't really take take the fight straight away again if yeah. I was at Joshua, yeah. just because it's not like Joshua was winning the fight and then just got caught and stopped. He was dropped four times. He was getting out box. He was getting beaten up, really. So I think Joshua should have got. See, it's oh, funny you should say that yeah, because yeah. I think, personally, just from my view, that had Deontay Wilder the week or two weeks before not knocked out his man the way in a fashion that he did, yeah. I don't think AJ would have rushed to finish him. I think yeah, he would. Yeah, I think yeah, he would have yeah, waited. Yeah, and it would have been an educated finish trying to finish a week. Nah, I, I, I don't know. You think is you don't you don't know? You don't but know, I, you don't I know. think. 
because to me, the way he was trying to rush to finish him, yeah. I've not seen him try to rush and finish people. Like that. And the times that he had early on in his career, like with yeah. the Dylan Whites, yeah. Yeah. he's got caught. Yeah. He's got caught. So he's opposed to have learned from that. He should, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> agree with that. I, think, I think, again, that was a part of him. Going back to what we said, the, the first two rounds, he was looking good in the first two rounds. He was jabbing, he was moving, yeah. and he was keeping it range. And he was pot shotting, which I see some moves that he do that he was doing that I thought was wicked. I didn't know he had in his locker, like the little pullback yeah, overhand yeah, right. Yeah. The like, range, the distance. The distance the range. doing it from range. It looked lovely. But for two rounds, he didn't look settled into the fight, where Ruiz was just warming up. He yeah. was just set, He would look settled from the get-go, and he was just building up. Yeah. Where AJ, we know he gets settled once he hurts you, and then you, he earned your respect um and, and and then he could slow it down and he could go through his gears but like you yeah. said maybe it was a case of wilder's knockout that he felt the need to impress yeah. so once he did hurt him he thought right let's get him yeah. out of here real. And that the you know that's him behind the scenes though about having to deliver on the night having to match your your competitors as to say i, I think elite. it's more so just your personal ego i think yeah. if, if you've got someone yeah if me and michael rivals and he knocks a guy out in this particular fashion i'm gonna want to up him on that it's and right now, him, Fury, Wilder, yeah. they're all competing for that number yeah, one spot. Yeah, yeah. No matter it's who's got the belt, pressure, it's who's, who's winning at the minute. Especially when the man that Wilder knocked out, Joshua took seven rounds to yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. The, the funny thing is that I think you guys are making a massive deal out of Wilder did that, so he felt obliged to follow. I think what? people forget he's been out of the ring for nine months. Who's that? AJ. Is that how long he was out for? Yeah? He hadn't fought for this in September, Povetkin. Yeah. yeah. October, but November. I, I think as a yeah. nine yeah. months. Yeah. That's for yeah. me. Yeah. When you've been out, when you've been yeah. thinking with someone that's out a, the ring for that long. Of time. course. And but that's with, massive. We're, we're pros now. And Wembley was cancelled. <laughs> I think that's quite, um, once you get to a certain level, I think that's quite normal. It, yeah, it can be. But what I will say in AJ's defence, <laughs> being a fighter as big and as bulky and as strong as him, he's still. He's not, a, let's be honest, he's not a natural fluid boxer. You know what I mean? They've turned him in. Yeah. He's, a, he's a good, educated, he's smart boxer. He's learned how to keep his guard up yeah. right and do the basics very well yeah. with a very strong, lean... A manufactured yeah. athlete. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a nice way, yeah. yeah. But, so obviously, it's always going to take him longer than a normal man to get in. So taking that into consideration that you said nine months, then yeah. We'll give yeah. him a bit of the benefit of the doubt on that one. But yeah, he, just a bit. Even then, I thought Ruiz was catching him with the same sort of shots that Povetkin was catching Joshua with, except, yeah. except yeah. Povetkin yeah. was yeah. 38 and couldn't, so like, couldn't yeah. hold that pace, whereas Ruiz was a younger man. He, he kept consistent. He kept the work rate. So, and Joshua made a few little mistakes in Povetkin fact that he still made the Ruiz fight that Povetkin couldn't capitalise on. Yeah, yeah Ruiz did capitalise yeah. on. The, the thing is, if you look at that fight, Ruiz didn't even put on intense amount of pressure you were just slowly no. slowly walking him down and that's the first time i've ever seen joshua box like a tyson fury trying to hit back behind foot. a jab yeah, back no, foot. and the thing is there was no way he was going to be able to hold that for 12 rounds because yeah. he's too muscle bound um and to me he was almost fighting like a welterweight it, it just it's for his size he should be doing what ruiz should be doing just walk him down he's got that mass he sh yeah he should have been pulling take, take, taking nothing away from easy because he sounds that way just keep you know yeah like, 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 putting the banners out you know like but listen listen this, this, this is for me personally this is the best thing about boxing is the fact of how opinionated the sport is and i love yeah. the debates i love sitting here talking and debating with people that's what it's all about isn't it like, and AJ's put himself, it, it, it's, it's credit to aj for us to be sitting here <laughs> debating and if i was a boxer i would love for people to be even if they were saying they can't see me winning a fight or this and that you know i mean it's credit to him for where he's got to so it is a massive fight, but obviously credit to Ruiz just as much from the taking it on the short notice and coming yeah. and doing what he's done. What I loved about Ruiz the most quickly while we're on the topic was the um the build up to the fight, the weighing and that he's smiling, shaking hands, asking politely, Do you mind me? You never a thought holding the belt. Social media was slagging him up. How can he be holding <laughs> AJ's <laughs> belt? Yeah. But in, in his head, he's visualizing, you know what? This is gonna be my belt. Yeah, he ain't complaining, he's yeah. got that sponsorship. Hey, and no one's ever done that. That's the thing. Even if it's for five seconds before uh, uh, at the way you just held them votes and now you've had to give them yeah, back yeah, yeah. that's added yeah. incentive man you're thinking yeah I'm taking them votes mm. home is that a sign of lack of confidence from AJ that he thought it was going to be a, a turnover job that he didn't have the, the same mindset of treating I would say Ruiz. lack of lack of um, uh, yeah, yeah lack of motivation lack of drive because of obviously having a uh, uh, opponent pulled out and let's be honest you look at Ruiz let's be honest you're Anthony Joshua you look at Ruiz you're going to be a bit grateful that you've got him instead of Jarrell Miller ain't it? you've got this big he's New York brother talking about he's going to do this and do that they're talking yeah. about landlords I'm coming to cash my checks now you've got a little fat Mexican talking about it's a pleasure to be here mate thanks a lot talking about stickers all the time yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like he looked more like he, he kind of might have lost that that drive, that kind of hunger in the, leading up to the fight, you know? I think yeah, one yeah. thing that you guys are not going to be, also the whole <coughs> talk was about Wilder was going to be next, and I think that was definitely on his mind. That's I know for a fact. They were thinking, look past Ruiz, 
we're gonna get Wilder next. Yeah, Wilder and Fury. Course, and course. Wilder and Fury announced their rematch. Yeah. That yeah. week, yeah. yeah. There was no date. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua was like, now who I'm gonna fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was in New York for the fight, and they, and they were like, we don't know who we're gonna fight. Right, now. Yeah. yeah. So now they were trying to give into Wilder's demands. Yeah. To get the fight. I don't buy that. It's all false. That um. I tell you, it's true. Bro, they did it before. On the day he fought Povetkin, they announced the first Wilder Fury fight. They did it. <laughs> they've done it before. They did it. That, that's, they've done it before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wilder has done it before. Yeah. That, date. that was a tactic. But I'm saying Joshua got constructed. He was like, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah, I think but Joshua I, is still... I, I, get, the thing is, I think just naturally, obviously, he's already a world champion. That's the next... next bit. That's almost like another brand new world title, even though there may be his belts. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the yeah. next biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think and just, I think naturally, if you're in a position where you're fighting a final, final eliminator, mm -hmm. and the next thing you're fighting for the world title, I think naturally you would look look past. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think with Andy Ruiz, I think through just he's, he, he's a nice guy. And I think from the way that he portrayed himself, I think the fear factor just wasn't there for Joshua. He was just thinking, you know what, this guy's a nice guy. I'm just going to go in there and blow him out. And then I think only on the night he's realised, you know what, this guy's actually come to fight. So you think it's more so naivety on Joshua's part? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think so. it's human nature. Anyway. I think yeah. Joshua sort of just thought, we'll get to next weekend, I'm just going to blast Ruiz out. I think when he went out, threw a jab and missed a jab, but he got cowed. He thought, hang on, I've got to switch on here. Once you've switched off, you can't turn it on. If you ever sparred someone, he thought it would be an easy spar. Yeah, 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 Once you go in there with a re relaxed mentality, it's yeah. so hard to switch it on. Yeah, it's not, it's so not like hard to you can't just switch it like that, can you? But some people can just flick that switch. I don't think Joshua's got that in his locker. You're getting punches thrown at you. You ain't got time to make that. Yeah, especially heavyweight division. I mean, not disrespecting any other yeah. weight classes but as it's a heavyweight you can't game. afford you can't afford to be yeah starting slow yeah but one thing going back to obviously that fight in general what we were saying about him and scan back i said fury is one of my favorites and that and but then mind games fury and wilder was playing you gotta understand the mind games behind the business you gotta do everything to get, get yourself up, uh upper hand yeah but obviously now nah, fury's announced the fight with what who, the what, swedish what, player, i'm yeah. gonna try and say yeah. his name and before that, I was singing his praises, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's a big disappointment, to be honest, because these two warm-up fights, it was justified by the Wilder fight, take your health, and even the fight after. But this fight here now, I think it it gives credit back to AJ for going straight back in the deep end, you know? Bring it down. Yeah. Sorry, man. What incentive does he have, though? Because when you think of Fury, because you think about it, Joshua's tied up with Ruiz. Yeah. Didion White's tied up with PEDs. Who does that leave? Uh, who's he you, who, 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 why would you take a risky... So if you've got a guaranteed oh, shot, if you've got a guaranteed on, shot on, in February there's, there's coming, there, if the man. Golden Gates are open, what incentive have you got? <laughs> what does Chisora do? He's beaten him twice already. Oh, yeah, all right. it's but then you got, I agree even like a Joseph Parker, what does it do for him? It's a risky fight unnecessarily yeah. when, when you've got that on the yeah, plate. Yeah, I understand. All right, all right. But then don't be slagging back. The reason I love Fury because he's outspoken. Yeah. He was he was slagging off AJ for the exact same thing. So you think it's a double standard? Double standard. Double standards. He, he, he is double standards. That's and right. I, I still, Fury is one of my favorites. I love that side of him. I just mm. felt that this is a fight. Like you said, all he's doing is cashing in, saving these chances for the, um, mm. for the, uh, yeah. World fight. But then on the other end, you've got the fighters out there like Dylan White. Right? You know, when, I'm not going to say nothing about the drug scandal because no one knows what's going on about that. It's not been confirmed. But the boxing itself, he gets in the ring with whoever he's told to yeah. and he goes about his business. And not one of them fights have been a warm-up fight to another fight. Yeah. No way. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. He's, he's like, that's, that's the definition of learning on a job. Because since the AJ fight, he's just come on leaps and oh, bounds. Exactly he? that. He's gone back and he's, he's, he's realised I've got an opportunity here. He's watched AJ yeah. grow and he's, he's he's just done the same thing. He's known that if as long as he can maintain that work rate, that effort and everything he's yeah. putting in and keep up with AJ, he's going to yeah. get another title. Yeah, so, and although he, he hasn't had the, the fairest crack of the whip, he's hit, crack of the whip, he still had to plug away. He's had the, the hard fights. He's had to go through the mandatories, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, yeah. the fights where you're probably super surpassing and superseding fans' expectations of you. Yeah. You think he'd have a few casual fights. Right. But he's, 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 he's took on all the hard yeah. fights. Chisora come back a hungrier, hungrier, better fighter than the first fight, which was a 50 50 and hard blew fight. Him out. And took him on again. And that in itself is a credit. So, so I think, again, that I was saying about the Fury situation, it's just a bit disappointing. <laughs> the, from a fan. But the thing is, it's not even it's not, it's not the first time. Really. I hope they got that on the camera. Bro. I call Max S. I think Fury is the man. I think Fury on his day can beat him all. Yeah. 100%, 100%, 100%, I'm, I'm not, I'm not and disagreeing. You say, with that. you say he's got. The Wilder fight lined up, but Wilder has gone and fought Brazil, who 
maybe wasn't up there, but was a good competitor, mm. and yeah. is going to fight Ortiz again, yeah. which, is a, which is a dangerous fight. I think fight. Ortiz is a banana. I think that's yeah, a banana. Yeah, it is. So Major banana. Can having you see him two, losing? Wilder's having that uh, hard fight. You can see him losing. For the Fury fight. Well, if, if that was a young Ortiz, I, I, I think he would have won. If, if, yeah. if, yeah, if Wilder, Wilder's last knockout, yeah, it showed... He went into another gear in it. He he got Perhaps. that belief and that hunger. He come out with that. You know what? I'm putting man to bed. Yeah. If he didn't have that hunger, but then again, that could work against him because he would go out there to bang him out and uh, Ortiz could just catch him with a few counters. I, but see, I just if, think if, that if, belief in a fight. Once a fight, one of the biggest things a fighter can have in the ring is confidence and belief. You can have that belief, but if you look at that fight, the same fight, just a few seconds before, he was hurt. He was, he was. And who, who, the Ortiz fight? No, yeah, not Ortiz, uh, Brazil. Who wilder Brazil? Wilder Brazil. You did get just, kicked just early, he yeah. knocked him out. Yeah. 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 Hit him. Second, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. thing is, Wilder actually initially hit the clinch. Yeah. Because he got hurt. And it is and the thing is, that's why I think even let's say AJ loses the rematch with Andrew Ruiz, that fight with him and AJ, I still think so open. Yeah, Deontay yeah, Wilder's yeah, got yeah. that one punch knockout. Yeah, 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 that, Easy. That's dangerous, but, man. What, his defense, 50, 50 he's got his yeah. defense is shaking. Them two is like a gun fight. Whoever gets off first. So I think although that Everyone can say AJ's career is done if he loses the next fight. I think out, that really. fight with him and Wilder, I still think it's going to be. It will always be there. Fight. Yeah, yeah, it will always yeah. be there. Yeah, I mean, Fury schools Wilder. Yeah. There's no belt. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Tyson Fury beats him also. Yeah, he's too, same, he's same, too fluid. Same, same. He's, just, he's a natural boxer. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a specimen. Six yeah. foot nine to move how he does. He's, he moves he's, like a middleweight. He it's does. possibly well, lighter. Yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. reported saying is he the one of the best movers in boxing? And then, and you got to say obviously the likes of Lomachenko yeah. and that obviously they're unreal, but they're five foot five, pound for pound movers. Yeah, five, or, five, yeah. yeah. Six yeah. Foot nine, pound for pound movers. He's up there, and he demonstrates that in the ring, not even just on the pad. Okay, you got to imagine. I've seen Jordan who's a middleweight trying and sparring. I mean, guys, we could probably talk about the heavyweights, you know, all day. Um, but just kind of to get, I suppose, give everyone's uh, thought. Who do you think is the number one heavyweight? Looking at the landscape now, the fights that are coming up in terms of accomplishment, in terms of talent. I, I suppose just kind of both. who you sits. Yeah, both. Yeah, who sits at um, the top of the, the talent-wise? Tasty Fury. Um, in terms of accomplishment, right now. With AJ losing, it's hard to say him. So I'd say probably Wilder, just because he's got a belt and he's been more oh, consistent with it. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, in terms of talent, fury, in terms of accomplishments and resume, right now, Wilder. Yeah, I suppose Wilder did face a lot of criticism, did he, about kind of holding that belt hostage in America? But yeah. having plied his trade for, I know Kojo Lissi is a the major uh, Wilder, oh, Wilder yeah, supporter. <laughs> and I say now, I think I, I think Wilder stops what he's quicker in the rematch. Same. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah. Because obviously he's got the confidence, he knows he can knock him out. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's done it. He's and he's on the wrong better. side of the clock now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is yeah. an old one. Well, he's better. Ortiz yeah. gone that bit older. Yeah. Do you guys all share the same sentiment, to Fury, or are you uh, Wilder? I like Wilder because I like seeing knockouts. Yeah. yeah. So he, Wilder's my, he's my guy, man. Fair shout. Hmm. I think with me, I, I do think Tyson Fury is the man. Um, but I also think, just in terms of accomplishment, accomplishments, you've still got to look at what Asia's done in the time scale. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at the other two, um, possibly double the length from the career times. Yeah. yeah, have they fought as many fighters in the top ten? I don't think so. So, accomplishments, my I'll give it to AJ, but Tyson Fury, he would beat him. He, he would beat him. AJ is too stiff, um, and Tyson Fury is too fluid. He's you just pop, you'll pop show him all night long. Yeah. 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 But the fight that's been announced now for Tyson Fury, for me, Tyson Fury can't put a, put a foot wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I, I watched him. My first ever boxing show I went to was 2008. I'm pretty sure it was 2008 uh, ABA final, which was at York Hall, the year that he won it. And I remember I was walking past the um, where the fighters come out, and they said stop there because all the fighters are coming out. And I turned to the side, and I'm literally standing next to someone's hip. <laughs> and you're a tall lad. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen Tyson Fury, and I thought, raw, I got out his way quick. And then I went back with my old man at the time, and we watched him, and he got in the ring, and to see what he'd done was unreal. Yeah. And then to watch his progress, he, he went, again, like uh, Dylan White, he went through the hard route. He had nothing easy, even after the Klitschko fight. You know, he never had, he never got given nothing. He'd done it all the hard way. So Do you think he's got the best CV? Or do you think AJ on paper? Uh, see, that's a hard because on paper, AJ, I don't think anyone dispute that. What the, he's, he's the, CV, best, the best, the best CV on paper. If you think about it, Parker, White, yeah. Povetkin, yeah. Klitschko. Uh, can't. It's a oh, yeah. yeah. it's a No one else has fought four top but, ten but, fighters. Uh, but AJ went. Um, Fury went to um, America Russia. earlier. Oh, okay. 
He went to uh, uh, America. And that earlier. forced AJ's hand. He didn't want to. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking years ago. When yeah. he went Steve, Steve Cunningham, wasn't Cunningham, it? Steve Cunningham, yeah. yeah. And, and two Chisora wins. Two Chisora wins. It's, it's different time, pressures. I thought Chisora was in England, wasn't it? On yeah, the Eubank Saunders undercard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. AJ didn't have a 50 50 fight till how long? Dylan White. And even then, obviously, the pedigree of um, AJ yeah. allowed him. And you can't look back. And they were both domestic level then. I'm not saying Fury is a better CV. I'm saying it's debatable. Boxing debatable. Some people will say that, obviously, the Joseph Parkers and them locks of the boxing game obviously makes. AJ TV a lot better, but yeah. I do say that's debatable. That one. And stylistically, you probably look at AJ and think, well, he's won the world championship at what his 17th fight, I think 16th yeah, fight. Yeah, you can't really look back then, can you? Because nah. the pressure, the fans, yeah. you look the part, they're going to expect you to want to build that resume against yeah. top yeah, level yeah, fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, didn't, you didn't really have to fight anymore for that fight anyway. You, I mean, Charles Martin yeah, just laid Charles on the floor. <laughs> oh, all the uh, yeah. uh, as, as sort of camaraderie yeah, pre. Uh, Free fight about the uh, walk in the earth like a god. Oh, yeah. oh. I won't see that ever again. There was too many that. memes off the back of that. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, moving on. Um, big news announced today. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah. I mean, Matchroom seemed to be getting all these fighters uh, from various different promotional networks. Obviously, parted ways with Frank Warren. Just kind of uh, your your take on the. I was going to flip a question back to you. Does okay. he stay at super middleweight, or does he go back down and fight Canelo and Golovkin? <laughs> I think I suppose Canelo's well, moved up. Yeah, so he's between the yeah. two. <clears throat> That's a hard wait because yeah. of the, 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 the fighters of the that are at the top are so tied up in their contract and uh, promotional yeah. obligations. Like yeah. you want to see Canelo in with um Billy Joel Saunders, yeah. you want to see um Alvarez in there. But who's been the um, stumbling block to that not happening so far? Warren. Which side? What, you think Canelo or Canelo and Billy Joe Saunders? Personally, personally, <laughs> I think I think maybe Canelo. I think they look at it as a risk fight for not mm. the money. To, high risk, low rule. High yeah. risk, low yeah. rule. Yeah. Billy Joe Saunders, who wants him? Let's be honest. He's gonna. He ain't gonna be there to fight. Yeah, I'll give him problems. Him. Yeah, Canelo just wants he to will. get on top. Of you. you ain't gonna get on top of Billy Joe Saunders. You're gonna be pinging yellow all night long. You, it's gonna be a hard fight. Obviously, Alvarez will believe that he will catch up with him and take him out. But the promoters are probably looking at it thinking, right, we could go up and fight uh, Kovalev or someone like that, which we know we can get hold of, and yeah. he's getting old. A star suit spell. And yeah. get a like, heavyweight title out of it. Yeah. That would be amazing that fight, if that, uh, Coming off topic quickly, what's his name? And in the yard. They've, they've, yeah. they've, they've, that fight's 100 percent signed and sealed 24th of August. Two I weeks from now, I yeah. Think, I, think takes it. I think he does it. I think he this takes it. Yeah. I, I yeah. think he takes it. Too young, too hungry, too fresh. That, again, the belief is an undefeated. And Kovalev's fight. been hurt by a guy who wasn't even a puncher. Yeah. Either Alvarez. Yeah, he's not a puncher. And Kovalev having a, a hard time right with regards to he's just been arrested for yeah, causing trouble. Yeah, plane, I don't know much yeah. about that. Can you explain <laughs> a bit? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know too much about it. But I was reading it the other week where he there was some sort of allegation from a woman yeah. against him that yeah. he's touched her or something along them lines More and idiot. he's been arrested Relax. I mean it's just so, the European that, thing isn't it so that's only a week ago yeah. and so he disrupts training doesn't it so, uh, you never know. he can still be training yeah, yeah. Outside. Still, still be even if they're both I think I just think timing is perfect for Annie but then again but could the fact he's going to Russia work against him you know what I think it all depends on your mindset the mindset that he's adopting into this fight is that it doesn't matter where it is. He's going there to do the job. Yeah. And I think 100%. being in um, away from home, that's, that can only motivate you more. Because I know if people yeah, are screaming yeah. at me, calling me this, that and the other, yeah. that's just going to make me want to hurt the person. Just know before, that so. you're going in there in the first place, I think adds incentive in your training camp. Yeah, I think yeah. you're going you're gonna to hit another gear in training yeah. camp because you know it's away from home. Everything yeah. is against you. You're the underdog. It could not, exactly. be, it could not be any yeah. more of a steep uh, hill to climb. So... I think that all works in his favour. And knowing yeah. he's a young, hungry guy from where he comes from, you know what I mean? He's, he ain't had it easy anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I think some people will thrive off of that and I think he'll be one of them. And if he does, assuming he does get the job done, how much leverage does that give him with a world title against someone like Josh Buatzi? As terms of a split uh, goes. Well, in terms of with split, with a world I mean, title, it's, 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 yeah, it's 70-30? Even I, with Buatzi having... I don't think that's a fight yet. I think Buatzi's still yeah. on his... Um, yeah. Yeah. They're still nourishing. Yeah. They're still yeah. kind yeah. of... You I trained, know, I trained with uh, Buatzi in Ghana you know, for training for the national, uh, Ghanaian national yeah. team. And I've worked alongside him from way before he went to a pro. And for me, that kid is on another level. But he he's still going back to 
these boys who I'm working with, he's still in a transitional stage. Yeah. Even though he's a lot more closer to where he's got, he's still got a lot of learning curve to go through. I'd say Yard is still learning on the job more though, because he yes. hasn't got that yeah, amateur, yeah, you know what I'm saying? 100%. And that, that, this yeah. is what is a bit of a catch-22 in taking these fights so soon, because you don't want to come backwards after. You might get a, yeah. a voluntary, yeah. or might even get two, but after that, you have to fight at the top level. Because otherwise, you're going to face that criticism. I think he's probably faced, I mean, more than anyone in the, yeah. the, the, the boxing world, him and Tunde. I think it's more Tunde than him. I think Tunde is the reason. Yeah, so I think we've got to give Tunde a lot of props because at the end of the day, in my opinion, he's taken Yard from whatever he was doing in his of life. Course, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's really changed his life. He's yeah. got very limited amateur experience. Yeah. And look at where he's performing. He, know, he, mean, know, he knows what he's doing amazing. and he knows yeah. whatever he says causes the headline. So yeah. he's doing it for a purpose. <laughs> it's working. A lot of fighters, yeah. I mean, they give criticism to them, but I mean... It's working. Yeah, but if you look at what he's done in a short space of time, a lot of fighters ain't got what he's got in that amount of time. Yeah. He's well got said. sponsorship deals for Adidas. Yeah. I mean, and he's been tested, you yeah. know. And he it. hasn't had a backbone for that. Like, there's no sky on matchroom deal. Yeah. I mean, you watch their videos in the gym. I get more of watching. Yeah. It's true. And it's a, so, it's a solo yeah. dimension. Like, you probably, the, I think, looking at it, the, the respect kind of probably comes from the fact that Tunde's taken Anthony from an early stage. He's nurtured him into this this big physical presence. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. that he's delivering, I mean, okay, the opponents haven't been necessarily up to the the the, the caliber of we're seeing the Kovalevs, the yeah. Alvarez's, the Joe Smith Juniors, but he's still doing. He's he's doing what's of put course. in front of him. And I think that's boxing. I mean, I mean, no one fights all world class fighters until they get to that stage. I mean, I, I was I think I was looking at was it Gerard Hurd? Like mm. his record before he got the belts wasn't. The greatest, no, and exactly. he got three bots in one night, so and that spurred him on taking yeah. that leap of faith. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. gotta give Tunde credit because how do you judge a trainer? Do you judge a trainer for taking a fighter to a world title who was a top amateur who was always going to be a world champion, or do you t judge a trainer who wasn't given the greatest amateur? Yeah. And, it, it, and what, exactly, and that's what Tunde's yeah. that's what Tunde's done, yeah. so you gotta give him yeah. credit for that. Yeah, I think that as well. Yeah. I think the fact that he's just working solely with Anthony, he hasn't really taken on any other fighters, probably puts into perspective a lot of faith he has in, in self belief exactly, yeah. he's got in Anthony and them being part of that process, the journey to win it's a world really title. Stable, but I know you mean in terms of focused on Anthony, but as well, I mean, Anthony put the faith in him. Because he chose him, he said, "I'm going to go to someone with yeah. a bit, a bit and, more of a bigger stable." Yeah, that's bigger. that's just blind like, loyalty. That is. Yeah, yeah. Is there a bit of like a general consensus here that we we think that Anthony has the the capability, the youth to to pull it off? Or does I think anyone... he's got the capability. Yeah. But if I was a betting man, I'll probably go with Kovalev. To be honest, yeah. by stoppage or points, Kovalev stoppage. And yourself, Yard all day. No, stop at your points. Uh, you already have to go 12 rounds. Yeah. Like, you're going to get man out of this. Seventh, eighth. That's what I think. I think <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, the thing is, I, I, I've run this fight over in my head so many times. I think, I do think Yard will stop him. But I think it's going to be one of them that he could possibly get off the canvas to do so. Yeah. Yeah. So the hairy moment is going to come. Plays into Kovalev's hands, I think the longer it goes, having been more experienced at the 12 round distance. Yeah. Which I think probably the age, possibly yeah, later possibly. down the line. Because yeah, Kovalev has yeah. been found wanting towards the end of the Alvarez fight, so yeah. I think body shots is. I mean, Yard's going to be targeting his body. And I think if you look at what Andre Ward done to him, he didn't want to know. So. It's a good shout. Yeah. It wouldn't be yeah. surprising. Yeah. 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 yeah, Ward broken yeah. down the second fight. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprised if he does pull that that body shot, that liver, that liver shot to to stop yeah. proceedings. But um, guys, I just want to kind of ask um, with this this fight against Kovalev, you know, in Chilia Binks, uh, Moscow. Uh, 24th That's of nice August. It right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you know what it was? <laughs> studying history, isn't it? It's studying history. But um, yeah, obviously this probably will be history. Do you think it's um, the biggest achievement of a British boxer overseas to at this stage of his career to, to pull Number off? Number one. As in, like, yeah, 17 biggest. fights, 18 fights in world title. Well, to go, the biggest for an English fighter? For, to go over abroad, win a world title no, at no, this. No, no, that's a beauty again against yeah. Klitschko. Klitschko for all the heavyweight belts. A man that's ruled the division for 10 years. Him and his brother, you know what I mean? They, they made, they changed the, the, the shape of heavyweight boxing. And, and it's the way he's done it as well. And he went yeah. and changed it back. Get, yeah. I brought it back to life for everyone else. So it's hard taking that away from what Anthony's is doing. Let's just think Fury, what he's done was big off. I think, yeah. I think Yards will probably be up there. I wouldn't put it as number one, but it would be, be up, up there. there yeah. Yeah, see, I think he's, there's a lot of narrative saying that, you know, if he goes over there, it will be the the biggest British achievement of a yeah. fighter. But I think they're probably misguided in a way because obviously Kovalev still, although he's probably declined in terms of 
you know, his energy, his his fatigue in fights. He's still that rugged, seasoned veteran yeah, that we probably yeah. don't even... Experience goes a long way. So, you know what I mean? It's a big thing. So it has a big part to play. So it's exciting. It's exciting. And he's the beast from the East. So we always... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? And he's, he's bringing that heat. Yeah. yeah. Would you put money on it? Or do you, do you not bet? No, I put money on it. I, you do? How much? I always go for the underdog. I always bet for the underdog. Yeah. And uh guys, obviously a big uh I suppose we have to big shout out, big mention Richard Commie, uh, yeah. IBF yeah. world title, mm. uh champion again mm. defended the belt. Some big fights out there. This division, yeah. uh, 135. IBF have ordered the uh, fight to yeah. give it to from a Lopez, yeah. but Lopez seems to be on a... He don't want that. He don't he's want in that Venice, sport. he's on a romantic cruise. What do you guys think of that as a whole? What, the, the, the Lopez situation? The Lopez as, a, as an individual where he's come through. And I think he's come off his last fight, which is a, a, a lot harder than what he had ever thought and his team had ever thought he was going to have to face. And I think they come back and he's come back and thought even... I've he heard said it, yeah. There's a tweet yeah. that he tweeted himself saying, mm. I've retired. And then it ended up coming off. Mm. He tweet was actually saying that um, once boxing, I stopped having fun, yeah, yeah. Yeah. once boxing it isn't become fun no more. And I think yeah. that's because the first time he had a hard fight that yeah. didn't go his way. Then he looked at Richie, and you think to yourself, do you really want to get in there with that man there? Yeah, I don't know about, about him, he's a nice guy, I've met. Yeah. <laughs> but I think with Richard Comey, a lot goes kind of under the radar, because again, like we talked on resumes and, you know, ability to get that that primetime exposure on the, the big stage. You know, these fights with the likes of Devin Haney, um, Tiafimo Lopez, a lot of guys coming through, Luke Campbell, Vasily Lomachenko. Mm. He, do you feel now he's starting to kind of deliver on his his plaudits? His Richie, Richie, yeah, yeah. I think they'll mention his name. They're not looking to fight him. They're not yeah, they're not looking to fight him. I, 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 on Instagram, I rarely get into debates with people. You know, we got them people, but the boxing yeah. pages when yeah. people put up the debate of Richie Lomachenko, Campbell, I go to war with all of them. Go ham. I'm saying, listen, tell, yeah. I'm telling you now, is as long as Richie gets a chance to get in the room with any of them, it causes him the, the biggest problems. I, I hope he gets the Lomachenko fight. Can Lomachenko take his power? No, I if, 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 if he catches, he couldn't take Linares. If, if Richie Linares catches Lomachenko, Lomachenko, Lomachenko sure. cannot take his power. But it's not only the power. This a lot of people talking about. I, I met Richie in 2010. I used to spar him as an amateur long before he turned pro. And um, he's now he's developed a lot more power over recent time. But that is in his biggest strength for me. It's his it's his work rate and punch out. Yeah, consistency. Yeah. Even though he's dropped his last couple guys and put them out of single punches, it's the fact that he hits you with 80 percent power with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 punch combinations, steps off and comes back again. Not many fighters can do that. I used to say it was like fighting in Spider-Man. You got to hit with someone <laughs> with eight arms. You thought they were fighting eight different people. He just and he steps off little angles. Yeah. The, the, the work rate. I noticed that in the Beltran fight a lot. He was really stepping off. Just little, little adjustments coming, coming back, yeah. and the punches just yeah. flow. And you can yeah. see when he gets you hurt, he gets excited. He knows he's gonna get you out of it. And I just think that work rate on top of the weight advantage that will play into his hands against number seven. Yeah. I think it will be. Is that repertoire of punches though an added bonus? And also the that we talked about contained. Uh, aggression when yeah. you get a fighter in, you pivot off, you throw shots from different yeah, yeah, angles. Yeah, which Lomachenko obviously does as well, just as good as anyone, if not better than anyone. I just think the size factor, the the, the hunger, everything. I just think goes in reaches. The man's like a man possessed. You know what I mean? He's yeah. boxing for his country. If you see how yeah. it means to, to take everyone back home in Ghana, yeah, it's, a, you know what it's I mean? a celebration. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. I remember when I first when I first joined the gym and with, with, with you boys. And to be fair, Trish, again, as I said, like no one knows me anything. Um, and Richie sat with me for ages to talk to me and give me advice and I trained alongside him and the way he works is relentless I couldn't believe how hard he trained and sort of yeah. motivated me at the same time mm. um and as you said he's not just a puncher I mean, look at the shot that dropped um Beltran, Beltran yeah. um the way he plays the left hooks the way he plays the right hands you can tell that loads of ability is there and as I, as I said if and when you got that ability to match the desire the hunger and the work then yeah you're gonna be a problem for anybody. exactly but that what we said earlier and everyone at that level also has all of that so they are all 50 50 fights yeah. they're all anyway yeah. it could go anyway but we just want them to happen you know what i mean from a fan's point i think when you look at like tira fimo and devon haney i think they're all just mentioning his name yeah. just to build their own brand they, yeah, yeah of course they're, 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 yeah yeah they're, 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 they don't want doing that. It at that level trying to come up for ages same as lomachenko obviously started early but same as luke campbell they've done it they're up there now so i think them three need to get in do you think we appreciate uh him enough richard in terms of you know having that that those guys that you can look to as competition whereas now like haney your tia Fimos, they look at the likes of loma richard at the top at the pinnacle yeah. as as 
like something they want to reach. Yeah, like, of you know, course. Yeah, that's that's an achievement in itself. That's something to be proud of in itself. And like Jordan just said, most of them are just throwing out names to make to make people know that they want to get to that level. But I think if the fight got offered to them, they ain't, they ain't gonna want to take it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm gonna say we're gonna start wrapping up. Yeah, but definitely. I appreciate yeah. you guys joining the studios today. Before Pleasure. we go, yeah, yeah thanks for having us. Thanks very names, much. Twitter names, Facebook names. But if you wanna start with Instagram, and we'll make sure we we'll put it in the link. So I'm we'll starting with uh, Instagram, Mickey underscore Amu Junior. Uh, ain't on the Twitter. I'll just keep it Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, uh, Saint underscore Dujon. And you're fighting on the same show, uh, seventh of the night. Seventh of September. Yeah. Down at York Hall, right? Down at York Hall, yeah. Perfect. And Ryan Team Fizz. My Instagram is Team Fizz. You can go on my website, teamfizz.com, and get tickets on there for my next fight on the 7th September. Merchandise available. Yeah, that's all on the website. So check out the website if things on there. Um, the Instagram is Ramez Mahmood 94 and Twitter, Ramez underscore Mahmood. And quickly, if I can share, I just want to shout out a charity organization I've been working with. Um, Be Heard as One. So basically, we've just started a summer sports camp right next to, I think it's Bethnal Park, right next to West Ham. Um, train station, but basically six to nine, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Any yeah. kids from 14 to 19, you just got to turn up, you ain't got to pay nothing. Yeah. But I'm supporting it, and I'm but that's one thing I'm trying to promote just helping kids stay busy, especially yeah. for the six respect 100%. Man, respect. Massive, massive, massive get your dad to send us that link we'll yeah. put it on our Instagram with your 100. That is 100. That's brilliant. brilliant. Uh, thanks for touching right. on that. Brilliant. And yeah, so I suppose, yeah, just sort of like you mentioned there, I mean, movements, uh, just sort of last weekend, we had uh, Mark Prince, uh, I am landmark uh, yeah, day for QPR massive, Football Club, massive, his son, Kai, and obviously having been stabbed uh, fatally, uh, the work that they've been doing with the, uh, the KPF, um, and obviously as Raps On, we've supported that from, yeah. from day dot, uh, I'd imagine like, you know, the word's been spread yeah, out. The exposure's been massive on that, and it's nice to see that people actually open their eyes to positive things, and the things people can do just by um, promoting other positive things they hear going on and to, trying to take part of it. So Most definitely. Been yeah. It's been a privilege having you guys. I mean, it's been it's been fun. It's, uh, but again, we're going to support the journeys of you all. Uh, Ramez, best of luck, obviously, on the night, much. Southern Area title. Thank you. And, and the new. The new. <laughs> and the new. <laughs> the new. <laughs> the new. Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Tune in yes, next guys. week, guys. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing what uh, a bit of a uh, Snickers and uh, <laughs> Mutter off can do. Yeah. Let's get ready, girl! He's taken another one, and another, and Howard Foster has stopped it! Wow! That is going to be controversial! That's a cracking right now!